perhaps the most remembered and tragic group of American pioneers who faced the unforgiving elements of the West is the Donner Reed Party. The group sets out from Independence, Missouri in the spring of 1846, at the tail end of that year's batch of settlers. The core of the group centers around three families, George and Jacob Donner and James F. Reed. Several other families joined the wagon train along the way. The news had spread of a quicker way to the West. Travelers were handed pamphlets, and some had copies of Lansford Hastings' Emigrant's Guide to Oregon and California. Speaking of a cutoff at Fort Bridger, which claimed to save many miles. The cutoff leads travelers south of the Great Salt Lake and across the Salt Lake Desert. The early stages of the journey for the Donner Reed Party passed with little incident and the group reaches Fort Laramie in late June, fully intact and generally in good spirits. While there, James Reed meets an old friend from Illinois, a mountain man named James Kleiman. Kleiman has just come east using the Hastings Cutoff and he warns Reed not to take the route by telling him, take the regular wagon track and never leave it. Despite the advice of his good friend, Reed chooses to stick to his original plan and use the Hastings Cutoff. It is this decision that will steal away precious days in the journey west, which will ultimately seal the fate of those in the Donner Reed party. On the 17th of July, near the Continental Divide, the party encounters a lone rider who has a tattered letter from Lansford Hastings encouraging the immigrants to press onwards towards Fort Bridger. All but 20 wagons heed the warning of James Kleiman. The Reeds and the Donners do not. The Hastings Cutoff claims to shorten the travel distance by 350 to 400 miles and be a much easier path, but it will prove to be nothing of the sort. The Donner Reed Party faces barely passable trails through the Wasatch Mountains, harsh weather, and the Great Salt Desert, which cost them half their livestock and many wagons before Lansford Hastings' shortcut would meet up with the old trail. The Great Salt Desert drives their cattle mad with thirst and steals them away into its vast emptiness, where most of them are never recovered. The wagons get stuck in the salt-crusted mire, and the supposed two-day journey across the desert takes five grueling days to complete instead. The party crosses the desert and stops at the foot of Pilot Peak to rest and to search for its lost cattle. It's five days until they are fresh enough to set out again. With some of their strength reclaimed, they are ready for the final push through the Sierra Nevada mountains. An inventory is taken, resulting in the knowledge that they do not have enough food to make it to California. Charles Stanton and William McCutcheon are chosen to ride ahead to Sutter's Fort to request additional provisions. Just before reaching the Truckee River, which will guide them up to the Sierra Nevada mountains, more hardship strikes the travelers when Paiute Indians kill 21 of the Donner's oxen. A small glimmer of hope comes in the form of the returning Charles Stanton. He brings seven mules worth of much needed provisions, along with two Indian guides and promising word that the pass through the Sierra Nevadas should remain open for yet another month. The weather-worn group starts up the river again, and on October 31st, the front axle of George Donner's wagon breaks. While fashioning a new one out of cut timber, he gashes his hand, and he and his family fall further behind the rest of the group. We pushed on as fast as our failing cattle could haul our almost empty wagons. And at last, we reached the foot of the main ridge near Truckee Lake. It was sundown. The weather was clear, but a 
large circle around the moon indicated an approaching storm. The party rests for the night and waits for the Donners to catch up, but the family does not come. During the night, in the darkness, and the ominous silence of the foothills, the weather breaks and it begins to snow. When the members of the Donner Party awake, they see how the environment around them has been transformed. Feet of snow have fallen. Their wagons can find no purchase upon the barely visible path. They slip, they get stuck, and their Indian guides cannot find the road. After thousands of miles of troublesome paths and seven months of arduous travel, the Donner Reed party's fate is sealed as they fall short by one day and only 150 miles from Sutter's Fort in California. The party will make camp back at Truckee Lake and will then endure five months of bitter isolation in the mountains before relief is finally able to reach them. When their provisions run out just a few weeks into their icy imprisonment, the members of the party search for the livestock that had starved and were now frozen and buried under countless feet of snow. When they cannot find them, they eat the hides they used as makeshift roofs and blankets. After the hides were gone, the gnawing hunger would cause the desperate travels to turn towards grimmer options in order to survive. Of the 87 souls who set out from Independence, Missouri in the spring of 1846, only 48 survived. Out of desperation, the Donner Reed Party had to resort to the cannibalization of some of its fallen members. Careful labeling measures were taken of the fallen pioneers so people did not consume their own kin. The survivors of the party are eventually extracted by four relief groups over the course of 55 days, but the brutal winter's damage had been done. Some of the widows quickly remarried and would refuse to ever speak of the experience. The tragic story of the doomed Donna Reed party remains one of the most vivid tales of this period of American expansionism into the West. It serves as a cautionary tale and an example of the deep sacrifices made by those in the name of promise, hope, and manifest destiny. Their plight would not soon be forgotten by the country, but in the coming years, the idea of the West would lure thousands to make rushed decisions when it came to the balance of their own personal well-being and those around them in exchange for a chance at a richer, better life. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help us produce more compelling historical content like this, please like, comment below, and share this video with fellow history buffs. And of course, be sure to subscribe to help keep history happening.